Boom, let's read. Moving on. So, Ravenpuff. Uh, we have a Master 2 Kiriko. This time, this is the first season since Overwatch 1 where I've been looking forward to playing comp instead of just doing placements, and I've been climbing quickly. Two divisions every five wins, and imposter syndrome has been kicking in. Monka W. I mostly play Mercy and climb with her, so I want to know if other heroes, if your other heroes are on the same level in Masters 2. Okay, we have the Vod, first fight. First fight played mostly behind Reinhardt, but as I'm watching the replay, I realize I probably could have just ignored Ball and played with Racer and Lucio. I main Mercy, so your positioning knowledge is based on her gameplay, so I was wondering where you could have played from and when you should be DPSing, especially mid-fight. Okay, let's see what we have in-game. Let's see what we have in-game. Start this. First fight. Enemy here. I think we could use some good vibes. Got one here. Draw strength. Okay. Heads up. Time for death, the enemy. We should just dust off. Four v three. Hot here. Sorry. On my way. Take your objective. Ball behind. Keep an eye out. Ooh, okay, I see. I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Is the entire fight until you die, probably. Okay, good Suzu. Still going, still going. That feels better. Got one here. It wasn't that bad. Just a fight with some miscommunication here and there. Okay, so first things first, get rid of the imposter syndrome. You climb, you know what's happening. You're not being overwhelmed, you're doing okay. Of course, everybody can play better in scenarios, but here are the main things that I want you to do. First things first, you say that you play a bunch of Mercy, and usually when you start fights with Mercy, you don't think about what you can do to the enemy, you think about what you can do to stay alive and to enable your team as much as possible. Kiriko is not like that. Kiriko, you have to look for headshots in the beginning of the fights. So in this case, you have to apply pressure. Okay, you have to start the fight by spamming. Even if it's not possible for you to like, if the angle is bad, as long as you're spamming, you might land a headshot onto somebody, you might land some damage and that's just gonna snowball. So you starting here with Reinhardt for the beginning, this is a bad angle, for example. Um, because you're playing behind him, the enemies, I mean, it's not that bad of an angle actually, now that I think about it. You can just spam over here. Like, even if you don't see them, you can spam over here, you can spam over here, just like shooting at it and walking here a little bit on the side. Now, you pre-heal him, which is good, but then you ping the ball. Enemy here. And now, no, nothing thrown in. Literally nothing. Use some good Maybe you're thinking that they don't go with the Lucy, maybe that's why you don't want to spam, but at this point, there are zero kunai thrown. Absolutely zero. Pressure the ball there, it's okay. But this Go is here. stuff number one, thing number one. Uh, number two, I mean. First things first, apply more pressure with Kunai before the fight. This can be done by either staying behind the Reinhardt and just spamming choke points, or by creating an off angle by going onto the left side, jiggle picking here, maybe they have a Widow, maybe they don't have a Widowmaker, and shoot. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Because even if you don't land anything, the enemies will be like, wait, she's throwing Kunai here, so I can't go here. You know what I mean? Like, it's still pressure applied rather than, uh, okay, so they have Kiriko and she ain't doing shit. Now, secondly, your TP is used to get out. But if you can force the enemies to do an action to you so you can get out, it's better than the enemies to do something to you so that you can get out. So in this case, this poop is very avoidable. If you're playing against Lucio or against Ball, and you're playing on a map uh, on a map on a map where they can boop you and use your TP out, then they get what they want. They don't want to get the kill in, on you. They want to get the boop so that you can TP out. Well, now imagine if you play from here, or from here, or from here, or from here. Will he get the boop on somebody? No. Will you have your TP available? Yes. So when the round starts, you say that you play a bunch of Mercy. You definitely think of who can kill you from the enemies. Same with any hero in the game. You think about what they can do to you, and then you do as much as you can without being punished. In this case, 
15 seconds in, you can see the enemy team comp. You can also hear the enemy team comp. And if they have a Widow, then you're going to play a little bit closer to the walls and be careful of them not having a Widow. But if not, if they're not going to have a Widowmaker, then you can just spam from high ground. You can spam from here. You can spam from here. You can spam from here. You can do whatever you want on this map, okay, angle-wise. But if you play from here, you're playing to Ball's plan. The Ball is going to be like, if they have a Ball or a Lucio, they're going to be like, I'm going to dive somebody or I'm going to look for somebody to boop. Either somebody isolated from the fights or I'm going to try to look for somebody to boop. They boop you, you TP out, sure. Not that big of a mistake, but in this case, maybe he would have went to slam Reinhardt. Maybe he would have go went for the Widow in the back and you could have turned around and helped Widowmaker more. Rather than you giving the ball what he wants. Ana's dead. Draw strength you TP in. And now 15 seconds, then you can see the team comp. We have Widowmaker, Tracer, Kiko, Lucio, and Reinhardt versus, I'm still analyzing the entire fight, versus Ana, Ball, Lucio, May, Cassidy. If the main uh, healing source from the enemies die, in this case, Ana is the support that can heal a lot, Lucio doesn't heal that much, then it means that the longer the fight will go, the more advantage you have because you'll have more heals than them. The way the enemies win in this case is by pushing the trigger really fast and winning the fight with a lack of heals, with, with low amount of heals, right? With explosiveness. They either do that or they get out. In this case, you get a pick. Heads now up. the fight is literally won. You just have to make sure... If you're a support in this case, you have to think... You have to make sure that nobody dies. That's it. You don't have to do damage. You just have to make sure that nobody dies. In this case, who's going to shoot Reinhardt? Ball goes behind. You just look in front. Look in front, you stay with Reinhardt, what happens? Lucia dies, not your fault here. Four versus four. But playing this close to Reinhardt, instead of like shooting from here, or even shooting from here, or even walking left side and stuff, just oversimplifies the job so much. Because right now, here's what, they, what the enemies are seeing. So the enemies are like, Reinhardt in front of me, I don't know where Kiriko is, and Lucio here, so I'm gonna shoot Lucio. I'm gonna shoot Lucio, but now imagine that you're here, okay? Or imagine that you're here, or imagine that you're even here. You can spam headshot level here and then heal the Reinhardt. You're playing in the way that you would play with amazing teammates. Lucio shouldn't die there. But because you're so um, used to like staying with your team and playing together, you forgot that there was a ball behind going, ready to go for the Widowmaker in the back. So even though you get a pick or two, focus on not letting your team die rather than popping off with damage. It's like this. If your team is down one or two, you need to be explosive. You need to carry. You need to force something. But if your team is up one or two, you need to make sure that nobody dies, you included. Does that make sense in the fight? These are the two big takeaways. Takeaway number one, if you're down one or two, then you have to make sure, you have to apply pressure. If your teammates eliminate one or two from the enemies, then you have to make sure that they're alive. So in this case, Lucio dies, four versus four, make sure that everybody's alive, but ball rolled behind onto your Widowmaker. You just forgot about that. I 100%, I'm not gonna go into like, I should have kept track of ball. Obviously, you know that you should have kept track of ball. You're in Masters, no reason to explore this. It's more about like the, the macro point of the entire fight. So again, two things. Number one, know when to apply pressure and when not to apply pressure, which I explained earlier. And number two, do not start the fights by playing defensively. Start by applying pressure to the enemies with your positioning because you can always swift step back by creating an off angle or would you just spamming kunai. You even spamming kunai here is way better than just right clicking the Reinhardt with full HP with a shield in front of him with cover. And then let's continue the team fight a little bit. This is good for example, this is smart. I can see that this is Mastix, this is smart. So in this case, like look at this, if you're staying behind the Reinhardt, you're dead, this is smart. Because right now, Ball, instead of focusing the Reinhardt that's walled by May, Ball's shooting you. You're actually winning this fight. You, one of the reasons why you won this fight is because you did this. 
Because split angles don't necessarily mean that you stay behind the Reinhardt. Imagine if you would have been here. May can shoot you, Ball can shoot you, but now the enemies have to pick. And by the way, the May shooting the Reinhardt here is kind of bad. They should just like right-click uh, the Kiriko there and Ball should shoot as well. Or they can just both collapse on the Reinhardt and make you uh, walk around the wall. So you playing from here, you see the game knowledge kicking in. Like, look at this. Okay, Suzu so usage here. Enemy here. Good spam here. You hit the wall twice, but this was really good. Nice. Amazing. Huge. Unlucky with the... You want... To, this was an aggressive play. Using your shift to get back to your team is okay in this case. It, it was hard to assume that ball's gonna boop you here. Understandable. But look at this. Like, just look at how much... How much pressure you're applying. Like selling, huh? yeah. Heads up. Good. Congratulations. This was a good team fight. I, 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 I don't, know. don't feel like an imposter in these lobbies. This was actually good. Uh, and now we're probably going to have somebody in uh, GM being like, Actually, Mr. Streamer, haven't you noticed that this player has been shooting ball 90% of the time? Yes, I have. Have you had Kirikos in your game that have a bunch of damage? It's not because they shoot squishies nonstop. It's because they shoot the goddamn tank. Because... They're like, 100% I'm gonna hit the tank and get my ultimate and apply pressure to tank compared to the possibility of landing shots onto the squishies. And then maybe we can get a kill. Now, it's all about play style in this case. Obviously, it's more pressure to spam the squishies and to know choke points and stuff. But if you're new to Kiriko, rather than spamming choke points at, I don't know, here, or shooting the walls or stuff like that, it's better to just shoot the tank in that case because it's still a little bit of pressure is more than no pressure whatsoever. Squishy means 200 to 250 HP targets. So get your value where you can. Of course, if this would be Overwatch League Kiriko, you'd be like, pew, 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 pew. pew. Bro, we can't all do that. Baby steps, baby steps. Apply pressure at choke points. When the fight starts and somebody's diving you, you can shoot the mail, you can shoot the ball. Nobody's shooting the ball. You shoot the big target. Target goes away. It's okay. It's not optimal. It's okay, though. So this is good. 150 to 250. Okay. I don't consider... Okay, me and Reaper are squishies. I consider squishies 200 HP targets. What's next? What's the second part? I hesitated investing Fox after Blizzard was done because I lost track of our numbers. I didn't realize at the moment no one died after they used their three ultimates. If I popped it, it could have probably won the fight. I generally like to save ultimates unless we're down one. Is this the wrong mindset when playing at these ratings? Let's watch. 221. 221 until 316. A little bit uglier. It's like a minute fight. Oh god, it's so scuffed. Okay, we're all dead. Before I let the video go, this is good. This is good. Really good. It's not optimal, but it's really good. It's very uncomfortable for Bolt to go for you. You have a possibility of fighting somebody here. You're not spamming choke points though, which leads to a lot of one team fights, but it's good. It's not perfect, but good. Hi. Ball's busy. I don't, I don't understand what Ball is doing. The goddess is here. Just keep rolling the fight. Goodbye. Soothing Ball in here. Hey. Okay. Come to me for heals. Enemy here. Hi. I need healing. I need help. Let the Kitsune guide you. Hear my that was help. sick. Got one here. I could use a heal. Sorry. Enemy here. That was sick. That was a sick ultimate. Um, it was kind of unlucky. 
It was kind of unlucky, okay? Depending on your intentions here. Uh, it's tricky. <laughs> it's tricky. The idea was good. Waiting on the ultimate was good as well. It all depends on patience. It wasn't a bad ultimate. Come to me for heals. So let's see the situation here, okay? Let's watch from a macro point of view what happened. ML you other got idea. Party, ML7 party. Tracer dies, you're in a 4 versus 5. Good contesting deck. The only issue that I have is the one that I said earlier with the fact that you're mostly shooting ball and the squishies don't feel any pressure. And you're gonna be like, see ya Zorax, have a good night. Have a good night, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for recruiting them guards. Take care Zorax, bye bye. Um, chat, so I was saying with Kiriko in this case, you're not applying pressure to anybody with your kunai. You're applying pressure with your body, which is exactly what you're doing with Mercy when you're just zoom zooming around. You're applying pressure with your positioning, with your swift step. You're not applying pressure of them being scared that you can kill them. You're gonna be like, but Mr. Streamer, I cannot shoot Mercy or Echo. Okay, but you can contest Kiriko, kind of, and Maze, also kind of contestable. So that should be like your priority. Should Kiriko, try to spam Kiriko, if you can't spam Mei, if you can't spam Ball, because you will not be able to shoot Mercy Echo. So in this case, I'm not gonna go over it with the mechanics and stuff of uh, how you're healing and how you're damaging, because you just like need more hours on the hero. It's similar with Mercy's movement. You'll, you'll get used to not missing that many Ofuna and that many uh, Kunai in mid fights, but you just gotta play her more. UTPing in here to save Reinhardt and yourself when Lucio was casting mid beat is good. Very good. Illuminated. May being here, but there's one big problem that I think you didn't keep track of. You said about numbers. Um, this is why it's it's debatable what you should have done here. If you knew that you were down one, you should have vaulted. If you knew that you were down one, if you didn't know that you were down one. You should have kept it, because you thought I was winnable. Because you have beat, may overextended, and this is okay. This is why it's not a mistake. Because who's gonna do damage here? It's gonna be Reinhardt, you, Sombra, Lucio, who are busy. Everybody's having their own stuff. But if you ult here, right after May finishes a, a cryo freeze, everybody's gonna group up on the fox and kill the May. So you're gonna be in a four versus four. Like everybody's having their own duels. Okay. Good fox here, by the way. Good fox. You literally ulted at the last possible second, and the fight being lost here is okay. It's, it, it happens. It can go any way. You just everybody needs to focus the same target. I think Sombra should have EMP'd as well. Sombra dies. The Sombra dying and not translocating away. It's her bad. It's not your bad. It happens. This is more about number track, so don't worry that much. It happens to everybody. But again, if you're down one, consider who has kill potential from your team. If somebody overextends, it's worth it to invest the fox because you would have won the game in this case. You would have literally like killed the May, maybe camped the rest, this was gonna be back, would have been way easier. It's better in ranked to be the one that does things rather than the one that responds to things. Does that make sense? So if you have the necessary tools of doing stuff, Instead of waiting until the last possible second to do stuff, it might be better to do that. If you're watching my games in high skill uh, lobbies sometimes, the, the dynamic kind of changes. Sometimes you go ultra aggressive for no reason, or, so, so, or sometimes you're ultra defensive for no reason. But this is Masters. And the way you get to Grand Masters is if you have initiative, you have to be proactive. You do not have to wait for them to do stuff to you. You have an offering, you have somebody over there, okay, maze overextended, you have your ultimate, I don't give a fuck, I'm getting a kill, that's it, a kill's a kill, a kill's a kill, I, I, fuck this, I'm ulting, I'm getting it, boom, that's it, if it's a bad ultimate, you can always give you it, compared to, maybe my timing was a little bit off there, and I should have ulted a little bit sooner, it's kind of like with Lamp or, with Immortality Field, or with Suzu, you can wait until the last second and get the timing, or you can just throw it and use it and do the best with it, and eventually you're gonna see the scenarios. But in this case, I would definitely would have said that 
If you knew that Tracer was down, old. If not, don't overthink it that much. But the problem that I have right now is with your positioning that is good, but that you're overcomplicating it a bunch. And this is something that happens to a ton of Kiriko players. Because of the mobility, you're complicating it. And I'm going to make a drawing. A very fast drawing, okay? I have very good paint skills. So please pay attention to my painting skills. Sorry, you're going to get flashbanged. Sorry for the flashbang. So, here's what's happening. Everybody's everywhere, okay? Uh, red team, okay? And your team. Bam, 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 bam. Uh, bam. This is you. Okay? This is you. Now, in this case... You're going to be like, this is good positioning. I can kind of see my allies. I can kind of see the enemies and stuff. Okay, fine. But where do you TP to? If you TP here, they can get to you fast. Okay, the enemies can just collapse on you very fast. And the angle is tight. And the angle being tight means that you have a lot of obstacles and that's going to be very hard to aim. Kiko has zero damage fall off. Okay? So, like, she does the same amount of damage the longer, the, the same amount of damage no matter the distance. So, if you throw your kunai from here to here, it does the same damage as from here to here or from here to here. Now, why are we complicating this and doing micro flick adjustments when we can just, instead of playing from here from the beginning, we can even play from here. We can make an even aggressive. A more aggressive angle from here and then TP back here. Or we can start spamming from here from the beginning. I would say that the best way to play Kiriko is like this. In rank, that is. Enemies, here, your team, you can play from this off angle or this off angle and have a TP back somewhere over here. Or you can play in such a way in which you see your allies to the side... And you see the enemies. This is a more safe option. So, in-game, that would mean that this entire fight setup, because Kiriko, I would say, is 90% in-ranked about pre-fight setup more than anything else. Because if they put yourself good, then they will they'll fight you, and you're going to take resources from them. And if they don't fight you, then you're going to win the fight by just pressuring. So, you playing... Wait, let me go all the way in the back. You're playing from left side. You're not applying any pressure in this area. Yes, Widow can snipe you and stuff, but you can still play around walls. You can still go a little bit deeper here and have a TP back over here, even onto the point. Or you can just contest from here. Let's continue watching. Look at this. No Yo! pressure. No pressure. No pressure. You're just waiting for stuff to happen. You're waiting for Bolt to go in and then react. Let's watch... Let's watch uh, this fight afterwards. Here in the back, fighting the ball. Pressure, pressure. I want to see pressure, pressure. Good, good, amazing. But now... Oh, God, I'm scared. I'm petrified. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. No. You have your team here. You can just climb over here and go in pressure. Go and flank with Tracer. Go and do stuff. Be annoying. Good repositioning. Good here. They have a Widow. You see Mercy. Pressure. Whoa, 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 whoa. Even deeper. No reason to turn around and heal. Good goal, though, with 2-3 Kunai and then turn around and heal. That was good. That was good, though. I respect that. But now, May Wall is here. So what? Let me just stay here. Fine. Wall's gonna break. Reinhardt doesn't need HP. Why do I drop? Pressure, 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 pressure. Pressure. Let's play the last fight a little bit. Let's see how you're gonna do. How do you approach this? Good! Amazing angle! Ooh, ooh, ooh. TP in there. Maybe didn't need, maybe needed. Split, TP in aggressive. A little bit better. Good, and doing damage over there in front. Nice disengage! Exactly what I said. Like, you go for an aggressive play and then you disengage back. Good. Climbing on high ground, applying more pressure. And here's one thing, though. You're disengaging here. But in theory, what would be more pressure? 
Your team spamming from this angle, the enemy's there, or you're playing from here and hitting your team and spamming from here. The more angles you can create, the better it's gonna be. Good. So let's see this fight. Kill up the Winston. Doing good. Okay. Ball's gonna engage. A little bit too stacked here. It happens. Gets booped yet again. No reason to fight the ball that much. You walk in, you pressure, but look at this. See what I mean? Like the enemies see this line. This line over here. This is what I'm afraid of. Now imagine if you control this area. Over here. You can still heal them. You can still do this. Or even deeper. You can control this area. So for example here. It's a little bit better. But we were like. Uh, your team was like a little bit split with Racer there. And now, right now, like the way you're positioning, you're just like being caught in areas where it's not because of you, it's because you try to help your team that much. It's because you try to help your team, you know? So I know exactly how we can fix the issues. I know how we can fix the issues. Let's go into Olaf review. Olaf review, Olaf review, Olaf, Olaf, Olaf review. What to work on to improve fast? Okay. Um,. I think that your decision making, your aim is okay. It's not bad. I just want to see a little bit more confidence um, in how you take duels and stuff because you've been mostly shooting the tanks. You probably are uh, avoiding taking duels with squishies or spamming choke points. So I do think that the biggest thing that you can work on, you literally have to work on two things. I'm sorry, this is how it is. You're the, you're the first player that I see that has to work on two things. And that's it. Because of your positioning and aim, you do not need to work on your cooldown management and decision making. With the sit situation that you're presented with, you always do really well. Okay? Like the sit situation that you presented it, you do the triage well, you focus okay, you split mid fights, it's good. Your cooldown management is also good, apart from baiting abilities, but that has something to do with positioning. So, this means that you should do the following. And I'm not joking. All I recommend you do the following. If you want to get better at Kiko, bam, kunai in choke points at head level. Very important to do that. Because I feel like one of the reasons why I don't take the duels is because you probably are not that confident in your aim. Do aim training with Kiriko. I have a bunch of codes in the chat, exclamation mark code. You can do anything. 10, 15 minutes per day minimum per play day minimum literally you're not trying to aim up and down when i first started playing kiriko uh i was saying head level 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 remember a lot of people in chat have ptsd from that head level head level head level head level you aim at the head you aim from from left to right as much as you can instead of up and down and up and down just spam chokes you do a bunch of damage Number three, split, create angles. You know what you have to do? You walk in fights, you see the enemies, you see your allies, and you go like, ew, no, get away from me, get away. You split, you don't stay close to your allies. You play in such a range in which you can TP to them, but you create angles by splitting from your team always think about this if you can see the hero that you're supposed to heal then you're playing in a good position if you can see the allies that you're supposed to heal and the enemies you're playing in a great position if you see the enemies without seeing your allies and your allies will not take damage then you're usually playing in an amazing position in ranked because with the last part, I'm going to move on to the fourth point. Made a connection between them. This is what I want you to try to do. Be annoying. Be annoying. Apart from splitting from your team, don't be afraid to go in aggressive. Be annoying. Be annoying. Like literally, like in the fights, in the fights. I would say be annoying. With this, do three plays Per game that make your heart your uh, heart rate increase. 
we all know what this means, Chad. It's like, if you feel like uncomfortable with doing the plays, then do them. Over the main wall, then you want to go like a little bit deeper and you don't know if your guy might die. Yeah, do it. I don't care. Do it. Just, just do it. Because if you never experience it, team has COVID. I mean, that, that, okay, team has COVID. Get away from them. Yeah, yeah good. <laughs> AKA feed three times per game. If you don't feed, you'll never learn. You have to go and test your limits, understand why you shouldn't do that, be proactive with your mistakes rather than be reactive. You can spend 20 years in a domain and know less than somebody that spends one year that just does more mistakes than you and learns from them faster than you. You can spend 20 years and maybe in year two, you're going to see that mistake. In year five, you're going to see that mistake. In year 10, you're going to see that mistake. Just do it, dude. Just do it. Just, just go aggressive. Just, that's it. Three times you're going to be like, like you side the fight. This is you playing Kiko. Head level, head level, split, split, split. Head level, head level, head level, head level, head level. Annoying, 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 annoying. TP back. Head level, head level, split, split. Head level, head level, head level. You know what I mean? Like you have to have like some mini games going on if you want to improve really fast out of here. This being said, do not feel bad that you climbed. You have good understanding of the game. And if you'd play with teams, with a fully stacked team, your Keiko gameplay is sufficient to win a lot of games. But if you want to climb to Grandmaster, you want to carry, you want to become a great Keiko player, then you have to take these risks. You're not feeding, you're not a liability, but you're not the star of the team either. You're the backbone of the team, you're the gel that's holding everybody together. But with this play style, again, you're not actively contributing uh, by applying that much pressure to the enemies if you just play like this. So that's about it. Before I uh, finish the vote review, Wave and Puff here said, thank you, Mr. Gamel, since this game, I've actually been playing here in quick play and feeding a lot to see what I can get away with. There you go. Keep up. Keep that up. Okay, chat. If you enjoy the content, YouTube, make sure to subscribe and let me know in the comments. Uh, what do you think about a vote review?